What's up guys, today we'll talk about some very common misconceptions that hold people back from progressing to the level of 2000 and beyond. Now, this position was black to play and it illustrates several really important rules that if you got them, you'll be on top of the crowd in no time. So first off, let's analyze the position in general. Like black is up a pawn, they've got this extra pawn and their pieces are more active, which means that overall their position should be much better. And it is much better indeed. Now, let's first see what happened in the game. And after that, we'll see what should have happened if black knew the correct ideas. Now, black played rook g6. They want to attack the king. Their pieces are developed. Therefore, in the middle game, they want to attack the king. Sounds logical, right? Because that's how you checkmate and win the game. Now, white played rook to e1, challenging this rook. Black decided, okay, I'm going to trade it off. So they took on e1. White recaptured. Here black felt uncomfortable that white can go rook e8 and attack the king and they decided to hide their king on h7 in advance. White played g3 and although it doesn't attack the queen directly because of the pin, they decided that they want to continue attacking and therefore they played queen h4, this time attacking this pawn on h3. However, it turned out to be a tactical blunder and you may think about this for a few seconds and try to find the winning shot for white. Which was queen takes g6 eliminating the rook, which pinned the pawn, and now after king takes, uh, white can grab the queen and their upper rook at the end, therefore they won the game. Now, how come that having an inferior position, actually a losing position at the beginning, white managed to win this game just within a couple moves? Here's the first big idea. Whenever you play a middle game position, what you want to do is you want to barge into your opponent's territory and attack anything there. Anything, doesn't matter. You don't have to attack necessarily the king because quite often the king is well defended and there is no direct way to create any significant threats against it. Therefore, you just want to move forward somehow and attack anything. Alright, so which moves would you consider here if you were playing black? How can you move forward and attack something? I can see one forward move would be rook to e4, which would attack this pawn, because we team up against it. So rook e4 is one option. Uh, rook to e2 is the other one. This time we hit this pawn on b2. And again, we're happy to attack anything. A pawn, a piece, a king, doesn't matter. Okay? Here's another interesting question. If let's say we have both of these moves available, rook e2 or rook to e4, which one is better? What do you think? There is another rule which I call principle of maximum activity, which simply says that you should try to move your pieces as forward as possible, because then you make them as active as possible, and they put greater pressure onto your opponent. So in the ideal world, you'd love to put your rook all the way forward to e1. However, in this case, it's not possible, because white controls it, they would simply capture it. Therefore, this move is simply unavailable. But the second best, most forward move is rook to e2. Therefore, rook e2 is the way to go. Rook e4... Is not bad, but slightly inferior. The most forward move should be preferred. We attack the pawn. Okay, what would white do? They probably do something to defend this pawn. Let's say they go b3. What do you do then? Well, the strategy remains to be the same. You want to play a move onto your opponent's half of the board and attack something. How do you play this? Well, there aren't many options here, really, because if you want to actually play on your opponent's side of the board, because this move will be the most unpleasant for your opponent, you don't have that many options, right? Because most of this territory is controlled by white. And what you can do is to play rook to d2. This time we attack the queen. And moreover, after the queen goes somewhere, it turns out that we actually x-ray this pawn and we can now capture it. By the way, here's another question for you. Should you capture it with a rook or with a queen? What do you think? We gotta refer back to the same idea, maximum activity. You want to move forward, which also means that ideally you do not want to move back. I mean, unless you really need to. Therefore, rook takes d4 would be a move back, right? You move your rook from the most active position to a less active position. You don't want this. Therefore, queen takes d4 would be, in this case, a better move to play. In this position, however, apart from queen takes d4, which would bring black a winning position, you also have one more move which follows the same idea, barge into your opponent's territory, attack something there. You can double up on the second rank, and this is actually an ideal position for your rook to be up there in the second rank, because usually your opponent has a bunch of pawns there, and they all become a target for your rook. Plus, it also stands in the close proximity to your opponent's king. Therefore, if let's say black takes this pawn on f2 on the next move, then that will start creating some checkmate in threats. And rook e2 would also be very strong, we would have all these threats and hands, and that would be an easily winning position for black. There is also an additional but also very important idea that we can learn from this example. Here's the idea. 
you want to play in the center of the board because that's the most important area. And by saying the center of the board, I mean mostly these four squares, which are right in the middle of the board. Sometimes we also refer to the so-called large center, where we include one more line of squares around it. So that would be the large center. And you want to operate on this territory, because if you are capable of doing this, you will dominate the game. And knowing this idea, you can already see that rook to g6, which was played in the game, was a like a really a move in the wrong direction, because we move the rook off the central file to the less important file. And we'll see now how we can use this in various positions. Here's a position from the Accelerated Dragon, and here it's most common for white to go for this plan. f3 and as black castles they go queen d2. And white wants to play h4, h5, in the long run open up the h-file, play bishop h6, trade off your bishop and hopefully checkmate you along the h-file, and they're gonna castle queen side. So that is their plan. And it's quite often very scary when your opponent starts to target your king directly and really goes all the way forward into that direction. What do you do then? Well, Knowing what we already know, you know that actually what's most important is the middle of the board. And therefore, if you can control that area of the board, you will overpower your opponent automatically. And that's why usually the best defense is actually kind of ignoring your opponent's plan completely and just counter-striking in the middle of the board, which black can do with the move pawn d5. And that just distracts your opponent from his plan. Now they get to do something about it, right? You start putting pressure here. Usually they don't really want to just to trade because after that indeed they have to deal with all these threats against them and it's quite obvious that they have no time to execute their plan, they have to already address your immediate threats. Therefore they don't want this. So in reality they usually trade on c6 and then they play e5. They want to keep the position closed so that they can come back to their plan of h4, h5 and checkmating you. Now that has to go but now this pawn needs to be defended. They play f4, defended. What do you do then? All the same stuff. Attack in the center of the board. How can you attack anything in these squares? Well, you can go f6, undermine this pawn and also bring your bishop back to life. So if they trade, now you're also your knight gets back. And now they already feel a little bit uncomfortable. They can't play bishop h6 any longer because of this pawn. So you already have some results from your counterplay. Let's say they castle. What do you do here? Same stuff. Think about the center of the board, like this area and what can you do to put pressure there to influence that territory and this is a quite quite a shift from the traditional thinking because the traditional thinking is just thinking about checkmating the king and then if you only think about that you think about playing on the side of the board which is often the wrong plan to pursue because you got to focus on the center therefore the best move is knight to g4 which puts pressure here opens up the bishop so that maybe you can even push the pawn forward to d4, your rook is now active, and again you see that you've got already multiple threats, white needs to do something. Probably the first one is to take and push d4 with a double attack, something like this. Anyway, they go bishop d4, they hope to trade off bishops and they still hope to attack your king. What do you do? You still don't care, you pursue your plan, which is to attack the center. And so black played e5, and it turns out that now you hit it, and if white takes, there's a sneaky bishop h6, and you win the pinned queen on the next move, and it's resignable, white has no defense. And here's a little challenge for you. What if white takes here with the bishop? What would be the best way for black to win this game? Now, black's got a great position, so even if black just trades here on e5, they would have a great game. However, there's a move which wins the game like very directly. If you can find it, please write it down in the comments below. Here's another very common application of this general idea. In this position of the two knights game, when you attack this pawn, lots of your opponents just defend it with knight c3, not knowing that this is actually a mistake, because it allows you to use this little tactics, knight takes e4. And your idea is that after they accept it, you then play d5, and you take your piece back on the next move, and you seize the initiative. Usually, your opponents go wrong and lose the games. By the way, I've got another video about this, so if you're curious about how to play this line, you can check it out later. However, there's one question here. Whenever I mention this idea, somebody writes in comments that Igor like, it's a really terrible idea because your opponent can open up your king with this intermediate bishop to f7 sacrifice. So let's talk about it. What if white takes here and only then recaptures? Now, indeed, that exposes your king, which is, generally speaking, bad. However, there are certain advantages because you can go d5 and now you completely occupy the middle of the board. You control it entirely. And we talked about the fact that it's the most important area of the board and usually if you control it, it means that you're in control of the overall situation, right? Now, they still try to take advantage of your exposed king, but it turns out that the attack is over. 
So this 9g5 check was the beginning as well as the end of their attack. And now they got to worry about this knight because you can push e4, drive away the other supportive knight and then grab the knight on g5. They try to stop it somehow, control this square, you play h6. The knight is now all the way back to h3. You can then go bishop g4, pin this knight, and you see that you totally dominate the game. So their attack completely failed. Why? Again, because you play in the middle of the war, you play in the center. For example, now it's funny that the most played move is actually knight h3 to g1, undeveloping the knight. Then you can still attack in the middle of the board, right? We don't actually aim necessarily to checkmate the king. We just want to dominate in the center, barge into your opponent's territory and attack anything there, right? That's our plan. Super simple. And it's very liberating thought because you don't have to think about checkmating your opponent's king even if it's hard to do it. So black can go e4, attacking this knight, taking advantage of the pin. If they trade, now you also put pressure on their queen. If they trade it off, good for you, you bring your rook into play. Now they realize that if the knight goes away, that rook to d1 can actually be a checkmate. In this game, they tried to play h3, trying to counterattack the bishop. However, after this, black still asks themselves the same question. How do I move forward onto my opponent's half of the board and attack something? And, you know, although he could take here, but he realized that knight to d4 would be even a stronger threat, because knight takes c2 would be a fork to the king and rook, and we would win the pawn, and then we would win the rook. And if white tries to stop it by moving the rook away, then knight takes c2 would win a pawn and attack the king, and on the next move, rook to d1, actually comes with a nice checkmate. And by the way, another interesting idea about the center is that you also want to operate along the central files. So, so far we've been talking about central squares, but there are also central files. And if you can put your rooks there, they're also the most active in those lines. This single guiding idea also helps across lots of different openings, especially when your opponent tries some premature attacks against you. Let's say your opponent is trying the king's gambit. Now, most players are confused, they think about this, oh, what am I going to do about this pawn, should I take, should I defend this pawn, but the correct strategy is to counter-strike in the center, right? Whenever your pawn tries to hit you on the side, you counter-strike in the center. How do you do that? You can go d5, for example, and you've got a great game. By the way, the same goes about the Vienna Gambit. So if they go 9c3 first and then play f4, what do you do here? Again, most players incorrectly take here, allowing this e5 push, and black is already at a disadvantage, they have to go back. Some players start defending the pawn with d6 or knight c6, whatever. Also bad, what do you do? Counter strike in the center of the board. How can you go forward to the center? You go d5, same stuff, and you've got a great position. If they take, you now recapture, again, you have your strong presence in the center of the board, you're good to go. What if they still try to bring pieces forward, creating some threats? Again, sometimes the best strategy is to ignore it, just to play in the center. So you can go knight c6, develop and create some threats here. And in this case, yeah, you sacrifice a pawn, however, they ignore development, which also shouldn't be too good. And for example, bishop e6 is strong here. If they try bishop b5, trying to create threats here, you go bishop d5. Notice that we play all the moves somewhere around the center of the board or right in the middle, right into those four squares, or somewhere very close in this, this large center, right? And as, as long as you do this, usually you've got a great position. For instance, here after queen e2, you've got another nice maneuver, queen h4, a little bit of counterattack, and after they cover, your queen slides to e4, and all of a sudden it turns out they can't defend their rook, and they'll probably have to give up the knight, but anyway, you achieved a winning position very easily, and you see that you could shut down their attack without even doing anything exactly about the attack. You just ignore it and you play it in the center. Apart from that, this example also illustrates the very same idea. Let's take it a couple moves back. Whenever you want to attack your opponent, don't ask yourself, how do I checkmate the king? In most cases, there is just no way. And that's it. Ask yourself, how do you go forward into your opponent's half of the board and attack anything there? And as long as you do this, that's how you develop a strong attack gradually. So in this case, black found pretty much the only attacking move in white's half of the board, queen h4. This time it was checked to the king, not with the intent to checkmate it right away, just with the intent to attack something. Through g3 it was queen e4, and now we attack the rook, we attack the pawn, we attack maybe something else, this pawn. So we attack anything, as long as we can attack, that's cool. 
hope this helps and if you want to learn my complete system of positional play, I've got a dedicated course called the Grandmaster's Positional Understanding. You can click the link below the video in the description and check it out. It's one of the courses that students love the most. We, I keep getting lots of enrollments all the time into this course. I don't even know why I don't usually promote it, but I guess that people just like it. Uh, because positional play is actually the essence of chess. If you understand these several principles, playing chess becomes a lot easier and a lot more effective. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions and have a great rest of the day.